What's happening, everybody? Welcome back. And today we're talking about dialing in suspension. I was going through a bunch of old footage, and we've learned so much with our race car. Uh, I want to show you guys some footage of from last year when this car was really, really soft, and it looked good, and it felt pretty plush in a sense, but you can kind of really, really see it was really, really off from um, where we're at now and the improvements we've made. So I uh, just want to show you some cool clips that we had and um, you can see the car kind of bottoming over this kicker and compared to my regular uh, play car here, doesn't go through the travel near as much. But that's something that you learn along the way and um, we had this uh, race car resprung and revalved and uh, took it to a suspension guru and really got it to the next level and that's really what it takes when you're trying to get a race car uh, going and up to race pace and have the confidence to really push. So. As we're working through everything else on the car, from the motor to the trans and all that, the suspension I think has been the biggest um, advantage that we've made in terms of advancements and, and performance. So that was last year. Moving forward to the beginning of this year, we went to uh, Plaster City here with Wayne at All Tech Motorsports, Wayne Israelson, the magician. And you can see the car was kicking pretty bad and we spent all day ripping that thing apart. Uh, we went through a lot of issues, spring rate being far too soft and um, valving being way off. So. You made a lot of improvements and then after this day he kind of got the shocks running okay but then we mailed them in and here you can see after getting those shocks back back in plaster city april 21st uh the car is just on a whole new level so he um really went through changed everything out that needed to be replaced uh, added high speed compression and just my confidence and the ability to drive fast and in a straight line for long periods of time was was remarkably improved so with that, here's some really cool footage from UTV World Championships. A lot of racing's been on hold, but I love looking at this type of footage. Here's um, you know some some real cool clips from the pros and see how they do it. Obviously, some of these guys are the fastest. Here's Phil Blurton, who won this event last year. Um, here's what he looks like going through the Fox Proving Grounds and a bunch of the other top competitors. I'm sure these guys spend far more time and energy tuning their suspension and learning how to go fast than most anybody else. So. It's really cool. I, I love watching, you know, a two seat Can Am versus a four versus a Polaris. Watching how these cars react. Of course, there's there's a lot of driving that goes on, of course, and uh, different styles and all that. Um, this is a really cool section to film. We had a lot of really good slow mo as well as some full race speed. But there's a you see in a second here. There's a lot of lines as well. So it's cool to watch what the guys were doing. This is a few laps into a, a ten lap race here in Laughlin. Uh, we raced the same track. We went backwards at a Rage at the River. And you can kind of see all these wide lines or multiple line options kind of funnel in. Here's a good drone shot, right? You've got 10 different line options and then you get into some big kickers um, as evidenced here by this guy. So again, just kind of really cool to watch and see how the cars react. I'm no expert, but looking back and learning what we've learned with the race car, I think it's really cool to kind of pay closer attention to what our vehicle's done and, and know what improvements we've made and then just kind of see um, how other people have their vehicles set up. One thing you have to consider too, you know, each racer might have a different strategy. Some guys are going for the individual race win with a checkers or wreckers pace. Others might be chasing a championship. This is a really cool spot where the course comes through the high speed whoop section and then comes right back up through here. So really cool spot to watch. A lot of great race action. I think there's over 50 plus turbos just in this race. It was really exciting at the helicopters even at that event. It was cool. So like I said, there's a lot going on. It was still a pretty long race. The race winner did it in three and a half hours. You're dealing with dust. You're riding racing at night. And um, this was one section of the track where you, you know, had a chance to really kind of differentiate yourself from the other racers. A lot of the other sections were kind of fast, flowy, like a short course where it would be a little bit harder to make up time, I think. So that's another thing to look at how these guys come through. So here is uh, Cognito Motorsports, Justin Lambert, always a top competitor. I remember seeing this Razor come through and it was just so quiet and smooth and flowy. You'll, you'll see a clip here in a second of this thing at full race pace. And uh, obviously really dialed race team, ton of race wins, one of the fastest guys. In the UTV uh, game right now, here's uh, Dustin Jones running the big long four seat Can-Am at this race. So. Like I said, this section, 
I think a lot of racers are looking forward to it. Hey, what line can I take? Where can I make up a little bit of time? Certain sections of the course you can't really pass, but um, this is where you could uh, push it, push your vehicle, you know, to go for that race win or go for a top five. Like I said, when I raced this event or this track at uh, Rage at the River, same track. We kind of went backwards through most of it. Um, some of the track was different, but um, this is, I think, really cool. It'd be more fun to go this way because you can see you've got all these line options into this rough section where we kind of came out of it, uh, the big moon bumps, if you will, into this, and we came a little bit more one-lined. It's another 4C Can-Am, looking good. Murray Racing, these guys did really well. Got a podium, really balanced 2C car. Randy Romo, solid top five. Alex Nicholas here, seventh place. This is a really good looking car. This, I love how this Reese Millen car looks and looks like he had a really dialed setup. Like the, the back end looked like it was kind of squatting where it needed to and it stayed level through those bumps. Cole Friday, top 10. He was running really good. Definitely one thing I'm seeing so far is a lot of the vehicles, you look at the roof line, it stays really flat and consistent. Uh, you can tell these racers have spent some time, uh, as well as you know, the driving and, and being smooth. I think it's the balance, of course, of, uh, of ripping and then um, not breaking off the car. I want to slow this down. This is a, a Holtz chassis. Sven Elstrom here, he was the top contender. And you can see what's unique about this chassis is it's got longer stroke front shocks that go all the way down to the lower A-arm, like the new speed UTV. And one thing that Wayne Israelson taught us too is you have to think about the front suspension is going to impact the bump first, which is also going to affect how the rear suspension handles the bump and ch changes how the vehicle is handling. So interesting little nuance I never really considered. And you can see this chassis works really well. A lot of the top competitors are running it. Here's the Fabworks chassis, which is just a little bit older version of my current chassis on the race car here you saw at the beginning of the video. Again, you can see most all the Polaris guys have gone with the longer four-seat chassis. You can really tell it feels like the two-seat Can-Am to the four-seat Razor is really the sweet spot that everybody's going to for a race chassis. I don't know if any of these longer four-seat Can-Ams have won a big race. I think the, it ends up being a little bit heavier and maybe you're dealing with more issues in that regard. Obviously these things can probably handle a little bit the best of them. Okay. Uh, Lambert in third place. Look how quiet this car is. So smooth on the throttle. This car kind of reminds me of mine. Looks like it might be a little on the soft side, you know, just from looking at it. It's kind of hard to tell. He's out on a different line as well. Another thing to think of two line choice. I mean, the main line is going to get hammered with this many laps. Everyone's running the same lap over and over. So a lot of guys could have been searching for a faster line as well. Um, this may or may not have been their fast, fastest lap through, you know. So a lot going on there. Potentially having issues, you know, you never know. Uh, belt temperatures, all those type of things. They were kind of climbing up the hill to get up to this point and then after getting through this upper section, they were going to really haul and get close to 100 mile an hour going back down into the main pit area. But for the purpose of this video, I, I think uh, it's really cool to watch. Like I said, I hope you guys enjoy watching these clips and seeing how the top dogs have their vehicle set up. And uh, I'm sure they've all learned a lot. A lot of these guys have been racing for quite a while and they have learned a ton. And when you do want to get into racing, it's a really steep learning curve. And luckily, like Randy Romo here is a friend of ours and been able to help us out a ton and ask him for a lot of advice just getting trying to get our car set up to be um, reliable so when we get back to racing here we can have some solid runs because you know if you don't get your car dialed there's no point in really even showing up randy here top five and, and what was interesting it reminds me of being out at a motocross race or even at a moto track the top five guys you could just hear it in their vehicle i couldn't even i didn't even need to see who it was but you can just hear how they drive and their intensity and their aggression level compared to most anybody else. So 
Same thing you're out at a moto track. I mean, I don't even need to see the rider, but I can tell by what their throttle sounds like that they're fast and they know what they're doing. This looks to be a narrower extra. I wanted to throw it in there to kind of see the difference between a narrow car and a wider car. Shout out to Sierra, she's having a good run until the uh, last lap or so. This is a really good looking, uh, I think it's Comsky Long LSR Can Am. It's a really good looking car. So, hope you guys like this. Just kind of looking at this footage, want to put something together. Um, you usually don't see this much. Uh, Nathan. McBride, our videographer, shot all this stuff. He's amazingly talented. I'm excited to work with him more in the future. You guys are going to see him for sure. Uh, awesome guy who's really passionate and got us some banger footage. He's an amazing drone pilot as well. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, please like and subscribe. Check out our products online, and we will see you on the next one.